Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. How's everybody doing? Hope that I you hope are all well. all well. Praying for you, each yes. and every one of you. Let us know if you are watching. Mm -hmm. Please greet us this evening. Good evening. Good evening to each and every one of yeah. you. Please let us know if you are watching. If you're joining in tonight, we would love to uh, hear from you. Good evening, Brother Roger. Good evening, Sister Farah. Sister Mary, Sister Sess, Sister, Sister Rowena, Julie. Hello, hello, Brother hello. Hello, Brother James. <laughs> Good evening to each and every Sister one of you. Sister Jenny and Brother Les. Good evening. Good evening. Good Mommy evening. Willie. Oh, Ate Ellen. Good evening, Pa. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you to for everyone. joining us. Mommy Willie. Good, Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. We're glad that you're joining in. Yeah. Where we praise God for each and every one of you. Sister grateful Sharon. to the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Truly grateful for this time together. Truly grateful for another Wednesday. This midweek catch up, I believe, will be a blessing yes. to each and every one of you. Mm -hmm. I pray that uh, that all the more we will hear from the Lord. Yes. All the things that we have heard from Sunday, I believe. Uh, uh, God will minister mm -hmm. and speak to us all the more. I pray that uh, today uh, you will be able to uh, get all of the things that you want to share. I encourage you to do share, to do type down some of the things that you feel that God is saying to you. Even uh, even if you missed last Sunday's uh, uh, message, even if you didn't hear it, I'm going to go over it again tonight, but I encourage you as we come together, let's worship the Lord together yeah. and and just, you know, come together and really hear the word. Yeah. Pastor Emily, good evening. Good evening, good evening. Sister Mako, good evening. Pastor Josie and Brother Jason, good evening. Brother Dong Konosa, good evening. Sister Marvik, good evening. Thank good you evening for joining to each and every us. one of you. Amen. Praise God. Let's worship the Lord together. Let's pray. Even as we begin, uh, as we begin worshiping the Lord, let's just ask him to just move and work in our life. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you're with us. We thank you, Jesus, that you are ministering to each and every one of us. And I believe, Lord, tonight there is something that you want to do. There's something you want to speak into each and every one of our hearts. So I'm asking you, Lord, come and do it, Lord. Come and do what you need to do. Tonight, Lord Jesus, we turn our hearts over to you. We turn our praise to you. We turn our worship to you, Lord. We give you thanks. We amen. give you praise now in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Let's worship the Lord. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He is a faithful God. Amen. Faithful. He is. And our confidence will be and remain in the faithfulness of our Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're grateful once again. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday evening midweek catch-up. Praise God, the first one of the year. Grateful to the Lord that we can declare how good He is and how faithful He is to each and every one of us. Praise the Lord. Thank you for uh, joining in tonight. I believe that our God will continue to be praised. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I want to ask you, if you can, to please share. Share to us. Uh, some of the things that you feel that the Lord has done for you and what have you you know what have you heard from the Lord in the past few days today is the 6th of January and I believe that the last six days God has shown to us how faithful he is to us and he will be continuously faithful amen to every one of us so praise God. Amen. Thank you so much again for joining in. I encourage you, even as we begin tonight's um, tonight's midweek catch-up, as we talk about the challenge of change, let us continue to consider what is it that God is ministering and speaking to each and every one of us tonight. Amen. Everyone say, God is good. Amen. God is truly good. and. I believe he will continue to to uh, be able to help us to get through. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm grateful tonight that um, we can have this midweek catch up. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that all of you that are tuned in, I encourage you to keep uh, sharing these live streams to someone who you think it will be an encouragement to and a blessing to. I know that, um, you know, more and more as we share, as we give in this way, it may not be ideal, you know. Um, the most ideal is for us to meet together face to face. But in in this instant, like right now, especially here in the UK, uh, we're on this lockdown at the moment. And, you know, of course, we're doing our best to to keep everyone, you know, uh, still being able to worship and praise the Lord and be able to uh, be ministered to more and more. So I pray that uh, tonight these uh, live this live stream will be a blessing to you, and uh, I believe uh, that uh, we will be able to hear the voice of the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for the word? Amen. Amen. Let's get ready for the word. Second Corinthians chapter four. Verses 16 to 18. This is the text. You know, the challenge of change that I shared from last Sunday, it's, uh, it's a place where we, where we are, uh, are saying to the Lord, are positioning ourselves as we're beginning as, and have began this year, that we're positioning ourselves uh, to, to change, mm -hmm. not to remain the same. Everyone say, I don't want to be the same. I don't want to be Amen. the same. We don't want to be the same. We want to change. And change for what? Change for the better. Change into who God wants us to be. I think a lot of the time in the beginning of the year, we focus on a lot of physical change. <laughs> you know, uh, going on a diet or exercising or uh, different New Year's resolution. You know, we always start out the year positive, and we always talk about like, oh, you know, um, I want to, uh, I want to, uh, you know, start out the year in, in a positive mental attitude. But, you know, um, we're praying that, you know, that it isn't just about being positive, amen, mm -hmm. but it's about having a change in our life that only Jesus can bring. And I pray that there would be a um, a spiritual restlessness within us to see more of who God 
want uh, more of, to see more of who God is, who who He is in our life. Amen. Amen. Uh, yes, Sister Farah, we'll keep praying for Kabil that his COVID nineteen result would be negative, mm. uh, negative, and his test on Friday so that he could resume his job. We'll keep praying for him, and we've been praying for him already. Amen. So praise God. The challenge for change. Let's begin reading Second uh, Corinthians chapter four, verses sixteen to eighteen. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse sixteen to eighteen. So we do not lose heart. Everyone say, don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Amen. You know, uh, what this verse is talking about here is that we get to a place where we understand that we have to focus on things that last forever. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about change, we're not talking about a temporary change. We're talking about an eternal change. And our inner self, our inner man, that's being renewed day by day, that is an eternal change that will last forever. Because our physical bodies will die. Yeah. It will fade away. But there will come a place, uh, uh, there will there'll come a time when we get to heaven where our spirits are in, because they've been renewed day by day by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. they will last. Like, that's why I say your character is what we will bring to heaven. Our, our inner man is what we bring to heaven. And you know, man. it's preparing mm -hmm. it's preparing us. Like it says here in this text, this light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, which means it cannot be compared to anything in this earth cannot be compared to what we do in the physical you know some of us we go through uh, uh, difficulties uh, physically some of us are, are, are physically unwell some of us are mentally unwell emotionally unwell mm -hmm. but when we get to heaven the, our bodies and our minds and everything about us will be perfect mm -hmm. be made perfect in Christ and and that's what we want to do. We want the Holy Spirit. We want a Spirit-led life. Amen. Amen. A Spirit-led life that spirit every day of our life, we say, Lord, I am focused on what you want to do. So this season of change that, that God wants to orchestrate in our life is talking about uh, uh, seeing what, what God's will is for our life. What does God want to do in our life? Now, I talked about on Sunday how how uh god's will is is not automatic it doesn't just happen the will of god for us is good amen we're glad that god's will for us is good but the thing is that when we're talking about a will like i said on sunday will it means desire will means want will means expressing a strong intention so when we're saying when I'm saying that the will of God in our life doesn't just come just like that. It needs to be chosen. It needs to be, you know, a something that you pursue in your life. It's not just it's not just saying, "Well, you know, Lord, I'm praying that your will be done in my life." Yes. I'm not sure. You're, I <laughs> yes, we can we can ask God's will to be done in our life but it has to be chosen saying i choose your will lord what does that mean it means surrendering ours for what he wants to do surrendering our will for his will you see jesus when we see the life of jesus he did not uh he did not pursue his will at all everything that jesus did he lived his life to pursue his father's will. Whether or not God's will and destiny for our life comes to pass is dependent on us. It's dependent on whether we partner with him or not. Are we partnering with him tonight? 
That's my question. Mm -hmm. This year, I pray that we will not just choose to partner with God at the beginning of the year. But every day this year, we would be faithful. Every day this year, yeah. we will not look back and have a regret. You know, uh, oh, I wish that one day last year uh, I wasn't able to walk with God in the way I wanted to walk with God. You know, I pray that when you get to the end of the year, you will look back and you say, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, that I was faithful. And then guess what? You cannot be faithful in your own strength. Yeah. It comes also from the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is needed in our daily life. Amen. Mm -hmm. we, want, uh, we want to change into who God wants us to, to change into. Amen. Yeah. We want to surrender our rights, our desires, our dreams. How many of you are prepared to say that? That you're willing to, to surrender your dreams? for what God wants some of us you're, we're so engrossed in our own desires our own will that we're thinking oh yeah this is what God wants for me of course he wants me to be happy but how do we know whether we're really walking in the will of God how do we know whether we've really surrender our dreams to what God for God's dreams how do we really know that do you think it's when everything that you do is for his glory Amen. it's not for our benefit at all guess what all the blessings that happen in your life isn't because you work hard mm. the blessings the true blessings that come in our life when you see a breakthrough is because you have surrendered your full will to, for the will of god amen Come on, I want you to, uh, if you guys, some of you can comment here and let me know what it is that you're thinking. Uh, you know, uh, I would I would love to hear some of the things that you, uh, if this is speaking to you, then say amen. But if, 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 uh, if there's something you want to add to that, then let us know. You know, what I'm saying to you here is that we need to let God work in our life. Amen. Mm -hmm. We need His will. And it, you know, the, the will of God, you know, God wants to partner with us. God wants us to uh, move hand in hand. You know, he wants to be, he wants us to be together in this. So Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 to 24, it says, To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Amen. Amen. So what does this mean? Put off, which means like take off. You take it off like your clothes. You take it off. When it's dirty, you take it off. And what do you do? You put on something new. After you've cleaned and showered and everything, you put on something new. That's what you're doing. You see, when every day of your, our lives, we have to continuously put off our old self. Take off that filthiness. Take off that ungodliness. Take off that, that sin that continues to try to pursue us. But we put on... What does it say? Uh, we put on the mind of Christ, the spirit of Christ. We put it on that new self to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. It's in your mind, so you put on. Why? Because as you think it in your mind, it goes into your heart. It goes into your spirit. So that's why even when we're reading the word, what's it? where is it going? It's going uh, through your ears and into your brain and into your brain, into your heart. So you see that the more you do that, the more you put off that old self and, and and continue to see what God does so I believe that it will help us to to continue to do that if we continue to put off our old self here's another verse second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 therefore if anyone is in Christ the new creation has come the old is gone the new is here amen the new you are there is a new you you are in Christ amen don't let the enemy ever tell you any different I am who you say I am. That's what you say to the Lord. I want. I am who you want me to be, God. Lord, I don't want my old self. I don't know about you, but one of the songs that um, that uh, that I love. There's a part of the song where it says, "And I never want to go back to my old life." 
You know the songs, I need you, Lord, more than yesterday. The last part of the verse where it says, and I never want to go back to my own. I don't ever want to go back yeah. to who I was. I don't ever want to, I don't want to go back to who I was last year. In 2020. <laughs> I don't want to go back to who I was yesterday. Yeah. You know, this, this change that we desire for God to do has to be a daily change. Amen. I pray that you are a better person today than you were yesterday. Yeah. Oh, that's a hard yes. thing, right? Sometimes our, our comparison is always from like, oh yeah, I remember 10 years ago who I when was. When I first got saved. Where I, remember when, I remember who I was when I first came to know the Lord. You, you, you always compare yourself to your worst. But how about if you just compare yourself to an hour ago? Are, are you a better person now? Because mm. <laughs> maybe an hour ago you just got mad. Maybe an hour ago you just you just cursed. Maybe an hour ago you were just doing something, you know, that wasn't the will of God. So, you know, I think that we have to get to that place. I'm gonna read some of your comments here. Sister Maria Holden says, "Lord, help us to surrender ourselves to you, and let your will be done each and every and in each and every one of us." Amen. 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 Brother Roger, when this lockdown was announced, I woke up. After I, a time of falling asleep, what I want is to be awake at all times, nor miss anything the Lord wants to tell me. Amen. Mm, yes, Cannot. Be awake. We Can need it. to be awake. Amen. Kenneth, surrendering and aligning my will is a hard pill to swallow because I always want it to go my way. But think this crucial move that must be done for us to pursue our God-given calling, which is much higher than myself. Amen. Yes, I know you have a calling, Pia Kenneth. Amen. <laughs> you Start know, to respond. <laughs> I, love, I love his honesty because I think a lot of the time, in our mind, we want to follow Christ. Yeah. But when it comes to actually surrendering and aligning, that's another thing. It's a different thing. Mm. When you have to actually live it. When, you, when, when it means giving up your career or when it means mm -hmm. giving up uh, what you think is good. Because I want you to understand what, what you think is good may not be what God thinks is good. Yeah. What you think is, is the best may not be what God thinks is the best. Or sometimes, Lord, I need another sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We keep praying for science and God is already saying no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't doubt me. Yeah. Just believe and obey. So we need we need to to get rid of that old self. Amen. Mm. Sister Mary says, He's so mindful and open to all of us if we are willing to come to our God all seasons. Amen. We Amen. need to come to him all the time. Yes. Amen. Every season. Romel says, let your will be done in my life. My Amen. Life. You know, that's what Jesus constantly said. Yeah. Lord, not my will. Not my, you know, before he went to the cross, not my will, but your will be done. Why? Was it easy, do you think, to go to the cross? Oh. Was it easy to, 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 he knew what was about to happen to What's him. What's at but, stake? Yeah. But he said, not my will, but your will be done. Amen. 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 So four different changes that we need to embrace. I pray that these will speak to you. If you didn't listen to last Sunday's sermon, I pray that today they will speak to you. Let us know how uh, how it speaks to you and which one speaks to you the most. Number one is God is calling you to accept a change that you cannot control. Mm -hmm. How many of you need to throw off the control? Get off the wow. driver's seat. Any backseat drivers there? Amen. Amen. <laughs> I think a lot of us, we like to tell God where to go and what to do. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Get off the, let go of control. Yeah. If you want to see the change this year, you need to let go, throw off that control. Mm -hmm. And accept it. Accept that God is in control. Mm -hmm. Everything that's going on right now, accept that God is in control. Amen. You know the reason why everyone's worried? The reason why everyone is uh, stressed and anxious about everything that's going on? Is it because they see that no one has control. Mm -hmm. Usually we look, at to, we look at the government and they're quite composed. They know what they're doing. But in this case, the government doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah. 
they don't know. They can't decide if schools are open, schools are closed. They can't decide if, if you know, if you can go out or you can't go out. It's it's very confusing because this is what they this is the the tagline, right? Stay at home, except. <laughs> Except on these occasions, they outline all these occasions, and then all of a sudden you get confused. You don't know what to do, and the thing is, is that it it brings anxiety and worry in people's life because they actually see that people, none of us, are in control. Amen. Yeah. So you know we need we need to ask the Lord. We need to ask the Holy Spirit. Uh, mm -hmm. to help us to accept that change. Amen. Amen. We need to embrace the change in every season. Because mm -hmm. every season that we're going through is different. Amen. And we must go through it with Christ. Yeah. And the only constant thing with those seasons is change. <laughs> right. You are changing as you go through the season. I think that's the most important thing because the seasons can come and go and you stay the same mm. then you know you're gonna be stagnant there will not be any more excitement you don't you don't have the joy of your salvation anymore mm. because um you refuse to change right. you know but i think god is using the seasons to change us amen 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 i want to say it in this way our our response to, to the changes dictates our ability to embrace God's mm -hmm. plan. Mm -hmm. You see, um, change will be there no matter what. Yeah. But how you respond to it will determine or dictate your ability in embracing what God wants. Yeah. Because a lot of time we, we embrace change in the hard way. You know, we don't want to accept the different changes but let us trust the lord in every season amen god is calling us to accept a change that you cannot control you want to read yes, some of the comments Sister jenny when we make decisions we can take comfort in his sovereign will because no matter what we do we cannot ruin god's ultimate plans surrender everything to god amen you know i um i watched a little clip uh this week and this guy said god is the only factor in our life who will not give us a negative result <laughs> he's the only factor in our life that will not give us negative result right therefore we can embrace that factor because amen. his plans and his will is always good for us amen sister malu if we keep listening to god we will be changing all the time as you look back over last year, we will see a process of change for the better in our thoughts and attitudes and actions. Although change may be slow, it comes as we trust God to change us. Amen. 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 It's the process that we need to embrace. It's the process that counts. Yes. Actually. And embrace even though it may be slow, it's better to change slowly mm. than change quickly. Actually, most change um doesn't happen quickly mm -hmm. and most changes and and i want you to uh, look at it in this way most changes that happen quickly they don't last mm -hmm. they don't last so um I, i'm not saying all but i'm saying most most change that happens quickly it doesn't last i love brother roger's uh comment here x control freak here <laughs> <laughs> praise god <laughs> i think most of us are are like that we're control freaks. Yeah, yeah, we all are. Sister Jenny, I thank God even when we are in isolation, we still have comfort because we know that our life is in His hands. Amen. 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 Ken, Ken says, when God calls us to obey, we should obey whether it is <coughs> whether it is that <laughs> apology that we are putting off or that change that needs to to happen yeah. within us because it isn't only for you it's also for others wow. amen yeah that's the truth True. i want us to understand that 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 the, the the call to obedience is is definitely hard mm. it's definitely difficult but that's when you know that you're surrendering your rights mm -hmm. wow. because 
Surrendering your rights to be right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's painful. Does it really matter? I want I want you、It's、to understand、painful. this. In with God, it doesn't matter who's right. Yeah. But it when God with God, it matters what is righteous,、mm. and what is righteous is to obey、mm-hmm. what God wants. It's not He doesn't care、uh, who's right or who did wrong in the situation. Yeah. But you, if we are really truly obedient to God, we will do what God wants us to do,、yeah. even though it may be hard. Amen. And I think just being a Christian, it is about that. It sometimes we think we paint Christianity as a very easy, breezy, and all beautiful. But you know, the only beautiful in Christianity is Jesus. Everything else is actually、mm. it's kind of messy because you have to give up your rights, you have to obey, you have to surrender. Even Jesus said, "Lay down your life and take up your cross and follow me." What is beautiful with a cross? What is easy? It's not.、Mm. It's not easy, and we need to steer away from that. Notion where oh, if it's not easy and everything is going the wrong way, then maybe God is not there.、Right. Actually, it's when everything is going the wrong way, it's time to lay down your life.、Amen. Lay down. It's time to take up your cross.、And、Jesus, even when it's hard, you know, when Jesus took up the cross, he was he was he he was what full of blood. He was you you can hardly recognize him.、Right. But he took the the pain. He took the shame, the guilt, the sin of the world, to so that redemption, redemption may happen. And I think just as Christians, we need to understand that being with God is take up taking up your cross and、Amen. follow Him. That's the real beauty of Christianity. That in the midst of those, the real beauty that we need to see is Jesus.、Amen. Not how beautiful our life is, not how blessed we are, not how big is our house. You know, some Christians paint their their lives like, oh, I'm so blessed, and I have like a really big house. That's good, but the real the real question is, are you taking up your cross and follow Jesus? So when the time comes, God will ask you to give up that big house. It's gonna be difficult, <laughs> but this is how, what it means to just being a Christian, taking up your cross、Amen. and following Jesus. Amen. Amen.、Uh, Brother Chief says here, Jesus is the best example when he accepted the will of the Father to、mm. die on the cross,、mm-hmm. so all can be saved. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Sister Michal, we'll be, we will be praying later, so、uh, we'll pray for your friend at the end. Amen.、Uh, so number two, so we, so the first one is accept a change that we cannot control. Number two,、uh, obey something you've been running from. <laughs> how many, how many runners、uh, are there? Can you say amen? Amen. <laughs> so we, so we know how many of you are runners. <laughs> God is calling you to obey something、Jesus. you've been running from.、Mm. What is God calling you to? You know, I remember when I first heard the Lord、uh, say to me to be a pastor. It was it wasn't something I ran ran towards、mm. um, straight away. You know, it wasn't something I obeyed straight away. It was something that、uh, took a while. It took it took it took a few years for me to actually obey what God wanted me to do, but. I want you to understand something. When even when you're running away, God is still there. Yeah. He is still working on your behalf. But I've always said that there's always the good and acceptable will of God. But how many of you want to live in the perfect will of God?、Hmm. You know, I, I that was one of the things that God spoke to me. In the beginning,、uh, when I first started, when I really obeyed the Lord, He took, He gave me that verse in Romans chapter twelve, where it says, "Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, you, so that you may be able." Are you hearing me? Yeah. Be able to see what is the good, and acceptable, and perfect 
will of God. You know, sometimes most of us are, are content to just live in the good and acceptable will of God. Mm. And the thing is, is that the blessing is still there. But imagine if you're able to live in that perfect will, the perfect will of God. That's really what God wants. Mm -hmm. God wants us to be able to just l stop running. Let me, can I share to some of you that are watching right now? Stop running away mm. from what God is calling you to Amen. do. Some of you, you've done Bible school, praise God. Mm -hmm. Some of you, you've, you know, been in the church for a long time serving. But have you really walked in the perfect will of God? Mm. Maybe you're still running away. It's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm serving, I'm doing something. But doing something doesn't necessarily mean you're obeying mm. are you hearing me it mean we have to get to a place of full surrender to god to say lord i will obey guess what when i when i said i will obey there was no i had no money <laughs> when i said i'll obey i didn't think about my future i didn't think about oh you know all of my dreams and my desires that i wanted you know, um, for some of you, uh, you know, uh, that see me now as a pastor, maybe you don't see all of the things that I had once aspired and dreamed for myself. I wanted some of the same things that you guys wanted. But it took a step of faith mm. to say to the Lord, Lord, I'm going to give it up for you. I can't I can't describe what's that like to you because let me tell you it is hard it is difficult but it takes courage and faith amen we need courage and faith to stop running amen, amen. yes and to uh, Holy Spirit <laughs> go into what God wants us to do amen yeah uh, brother Roger says here uh, when we surrender we see the wonderful miracles our Lord does when we want to control the outcome of all things, we will become stuck. So if things in your life are stuck or keep repeating themselves, get out of control and enjoy the peace and joy he gives us. Amen. 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 Stop running. Yeah, Brother Ken, God had equipped us for what he has called us to. Amen. 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 But you know, sometimes he just wants a faithful and willing heart. And the equipping, it follows. Amen. You see it. Brother Nam, amen. I need to stop running to my way and run to God's way. Amen. Yes, we need to stop <laughs> running away. You know, sometimes it's because you want control. So we want, always want it done our way. When we're ready, when we have everything that we need, when we have a house, when we have, um, when I'm married, I'll do it then, Lord. You know, but when God calls, it's now. Right. It's it's now. He's giving you a, this window. He's giving you this opportunity. Because, you know, whether you like it or not, it's not about you. Soul is Souls are at stake. It's not about you, but it's actually about His kingdom. So, I know God's timing is perfect. His will is perfect, and you just need to step into that perfection. You don't need to be perfect, but you need to step into it, and God will perfect it. Amen. God will perfect Amen. His will for His sake and for His kingdom. Amen. Amen. Justina says, we settle for less just to avoid God's will mm -hmm. and never reach full potential that God placed that's right. In us. That's Amen. Right. You know why? You know why that's the case? Because most of us only only want God's will when it's convenient. Yes. But most of the time what God wants to do in our life is not convenient. No. You know, when when we just settle. Mm -hmm. You know. But when you think about the men and women in the Bible, the times they were living in and the way they stepped out, it was all outside of our comfort zone and this is when you see God move mm. you see when you think like I need to have the gift 
we're gonna be blinded we think we've done it because we have the gift right. we have we were equipped but no that when Moses was called he was saying that I can't even speak I was he stutters but God was just saying to go and he went and you we saw signs and wonders and miracles and this is when we step out that we see God move and you can say in the end Lord it wasn't me it was you Sister <laughs> <laughs> Marion says running away from God's will takes away the real joy in serving him yes yeah. amen amen, amen. Uh, Nem says how can you run away from God he lives and <laughs> breathes in it. <laughs> that's right even if you make your bed in hell he's there right. we can't <laughs> so run. stop running that that's the thing isn't it uh, that's what's ironic about this is that um, we can actually think we can run away from God mm -hmm. but we can't so let's stop running Amen. Yes, let's stop running. <laughs> let's stop running. Number uh, number three uh, is God is calling you to give birth to something new in your life. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, acting upon a desire God has planted in your life, is it may be a difficult thing, but God will always use your obedience to further develop your faith. God will use your obedience to develop your faith. So sometimes it all it takes is just simply to obey. Amen. And uh, you will see that your faith will be developed more and more. So this year, there is something God wants to give birth to in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, something new. Everyone's saying new. New. Not something old. Not something, you know, um, something reused. God wants to birth something new mm -hmm. and it will bring new life, new joy, Amen. new anointing in your life, a new wineskin. Thank you, Jesus. And, and, and you know, that's what it will do. It will, it will continue. We, we must see that, you know, um, we need to, we need to ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you want to give birth in me? Mm. You know, the picture that, that I see in this, in, in this, when we're talking about giving birth, to something new in your life is Mary. You know, uh, in scripture, she accepted to live in this grace. Mm -hmm. She accepted to live, you know, uh, beyond what people thought. Mm -hmm. Because in, in you know, um, having a baby out of wedlock you know, uh, at that time, at that time it, it, it's, it's, it's like... You'd be stoned to yeah, death. It's something that you could be killed for. You know, it's something, you know, uh, that is it's terrible. It's a terrible thing. And uh, the thing is, even the way Jesus was birthed into this world, it was, it was something that was out of the ordinary. Hmm. And when God wants to do something in your life, it's the, out of the ordinary. Yeah. It's not something that's normal. It's extraordinary. Yeah. Amen. Wow. It's extraordinary. Thank you, Lord. So I pray that whatever it is that God wants to do in our life this year, a new birth, a new mm -hmm. birth, maybe for some of you it means just coming back to God. That newness is about you coming back to God. You know, there's some that I know and I've seen running away from God and it's because they can't forgive themselves or they can't you know uh, they can't face the reality of their sins shame. and the sin and the shame is just overwhelming Taking them over. yeah. in those times in those moments what needs to be given birth in your life to have the new life is surrender mm. and it's saying Lord I, I need something new yeah there needs to be that desire for newness. If you want to see God do more in your life, then surrender to the new thing that Amen. He wants to do. Amen. Amen. And that's that's hard because none of us want to change. Yeah. But like I said, there's a challenge to change. Amen. Amen. There's a challenge to change. Uh, just why don't you read uh, uh, Sir Chief's brother uh, Roger? Our brother, right? Brother Roger, yeah. 
In the time I have been in the church and the time I gave up control for him, he has protected me and provided for in ways I could not have imagined. Thank you, Jesus. And I know I will want control again and again. And I know you love me, so I will give up control to you always. Amen. 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 You know, this is a process. And what I like about God, he doesn't overwhelm us with like, give up you know everything sometimes he does it in areas yeah. of our lives allow me to occupy this surrender this to me and then another season he will say okay this one i need to occupy that until he takes first place in our lives and he's very gentle so when you do surrender god is very gentle to you amen Sister Maria, God's way is not an easy way. I think most of us want comfort. So help us, Lord, to follow your will. Amen. Amen. Keep reading. I can't see it. <laughs> oh, we can only run for a certain time. When it's time, it's time. Do not wait for God to arrest you. Right. You know, do not wait until, like, it's going to take. A, a, a sickness is gonna take a job it's gonna take you know it's gonna cost you so much until you say yes to God so don't don't wait for that do it now amen, amen. sister Elisa God will shut every door until only one door is left all it takes to stop running from God is one step a simple obedience amen amen, amen. we big. can run brother chief we can run and hide from man but we can't run from God stop running <laughs> yeah some of you are running away from us <laughs> but you can't run away from God when God calls you <laughs> some of you are running away from uh, from us as your pastors <laughs> but you cannot run from God yeah so uh, we're not playing we're not going to play hide and seek with you anymore <laughs> no we're just gonna give you to god <laughs> <laughs> just say lord arrest them <laughs> yeah sister jenny our god is a god of new beginnings and likes doing new things in our lives we have new life in christ with new opportunities and new challenges amen yes I believe that God is one wants us to step into this newness, but He need we need to get rid of the old. Amen. Amen. We, God, we can't birth the new life unless we get rid of the old. Right. So, I think God, for me personally, with this lockdown, God has really removed so many things in in my heart. Some some attitudes, some mindsets, some habits that he's just removing them so that I can step into the new and even when we step in the new we need to sit there with him mm. we need to sit there with Jesus and and just be soaked in him you know new wine is not really good old is still better right, right? so when you when you step into this newness you need a time of sitting in settling in and marination yeah. you need to marinate yourself in the presence Amen. of god marinate Amen. yourself with the word marinate soak in him because sometimes when newness comes it's not like straight away you'll be serving straight away you need to do this do that no it's not about doing remember that it's about just getting to know god even more in mm. a deeper way Amen. and and allowing him to marinate you allowing him to That's soak good. you in his presence amen man That's i read really that good. this week yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i like nem's comment he says we all desire new things how come we don't want new things from god god Ooh, can give yes. what god can give you know, I love that. Mm. Why? Because, you know, you want a new car, you want a new house, you want new clothes, you want, you know... New uh, body. Yeah, a new face. <laughs> <laughs> new face. <laughs> but how come we don't want the new things that God can oh, give? Oh, yeah. It's we, even better. It's more than what we it's want. It's better and the best. Rommel says, you can, hi you can run, but you can't hide. But you cannot hide forever. Yes. <laughs> It's good. Amen. Yes, you can run, but you can't hide forever. Okay, last one, last point. God is calling you to reclaim something that you have lost in your life. Mm. This is 
a challenge for change? What is it that you have lost in your life? For some of you, you've given up on those things that you've lost. Mm. You've actually just turned your back on it. You just mm-hmm. say, you know what, no, I'm done. Can't anymore. The devil will, has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Yeah. But the very life Jesus died, uh, the very life that Jesus gave up for us is for us to have access mm. to all of the things that He has for us, including restoring what was lost. And I was saying on Sunday that one of the things that the enemy knows that brings us strength is joy. Yeah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm -hmm. The joy of our salvation. And, you know, when we allow the enemy to continue to deceive us, to continue to put us down, to continue to put, put on this this uh, garment of heaviness on mm. us instead of gar- instead of a garment of praise because you know what when you put on a garment of praise it produces joy amen when you put on worship it produces joy yes right when you put on the promise and the word of god it produces joy and let me tell you what the enemy is trying to do in this season is he's trying to scare you to death mm. He's trying to put fear in your heart. Mm-hmm. You know, um, sometimes it's frustrating when, um, you know, that even Christians, I see a lot of Christians just being, uh, just allowing themselves to be overwhelmed by, by all of the things that are going yeah. on. You know, uh, we have enough reporters on this earth. Amen. <laughs> We have enough newscasters and news agencies. Who brings bad news, by the that way. That brings bad yeah. news, right. But us that are walking in the kingdom, when negative news, bad news is being spoken, spoken released, you yeah. need to release worship. Amen. You need to release prayers. Praise. You need to release joy that comes from the Holy Ghost. You know, you need to release that into the atmosphere. Why? Because there's so much. When What are you reposting on your Facebook or on Instagram or on wherever, YouTube or wherever you are? What are you reposting there? Who? What are you sending to others? To bring joy, the joy of the Lord into their life, mm. or are you the are you part? Are we part? All of us, <laughs> because even I fall into this trap. Part of the are world. Are we all part yeah. of producing bad news in people's life? I want to be the one that helps speak the joy. Amen. Into people's life, uh, Sister Farah says here, Psalm fifty-one, verse twelve. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. You know, David said this prayer out of a heart of repentance. When he was repenting Mm. unto the Lord, asking God to forgive him. Maybe that's what we need to do. If we want to see the joy of the Lord restored in our life, maybe there's something you need to repent. Humility. There's something that you need to ask God for forgiveness for. If you want to reclaim what God has for you that you have lost, you need to get to the place of asking the Lord to restore. Amen. Amen. Restore that joy. Because that joy produces the strength of the Lord. Why are we feeling weak? Why are we feeling down? Even David said it. Why so downcast all my soul? What does he counter it with? With praise. Put your hope in God. Mm -hmm. He says it. He's confessing it. He's saying, I will not let this take away my joy, but I'm going to reclaim everything. I'm Mm -hmm. going to take hold of everything that God has for me. Remember what I said on Sunday. When we're talking about reclaiming, we're talking about a baggage claim. That's that's the only place I see that word. Mm-hmm. Baggage reclaim. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's where that's the only time I've seen that word. I've never really seen it anywhere else, like on a sign. What does that mean? You need to take back what is yours. That's right. Are you hearing me? Mm-hmm. The enemy wants to take away 
what isn't yours. But you need what isn't uh, what isn't uh, his. I should say he wants to take away everything that God has for you. But you need to take back what God yeah, has amen. actually given to you. Esther Miles says, "Reclaim our passion for God by changing our priorities." Amen. amen. Yes. Let's change. Yes, amen. we need to. We need to change amen. the way, the way we do things. We need to change. Brother, brother Roger, Roger, I want to reclaim the relationship of my twin brother. He has been gone from my life for too long. Amen. Amen. May Amen. God reclaim it, brother. That. Reclaim yes. it in the name of Jesus. Pastor Emily, repent, return, release, reclaim, restore. Amen. You know Amen. when God restores, He doubles it. Amen. He even adds more to it. So get in the in position to claim Amen. reclaim brother Amen. chief can you see it yeah okay when we lost something good by following god it's because he's already prepared something better yes. Amen. Oh. by the way there's a difference when mm -hmm. the enemy comes to steal and take away god can restore it but there are times when it's not the enemy that takes that away it's the lord Mm. And when that time comes, you don't have to reclaim back what's old. Yeah. God has something new. God <laughs> wants to give something new. God wants to give something new. Mm -hmm. Amen. The, uh, Sister Jenny. The joy of the Lord is our strength, is brought to fullness when we accept His provision of righteousness by grace. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Sister Malu, we must put on the new role head in the new direction and have the new way of thinking that the holy spirit gives amen yes amen. i believe that this season of so many lockdowns mm. god wants a turning to him mm. a time of turning of hearts to him we don't we're not gonna look to the government we're not gonna look to the scientist we're not gonna look to the pastor <laughs> but there will be god wants to us to turn turn to him there's turning mm, and and i believe that the change the new things that god he wants to do in us first we need to turn to him because you cannot take you cannot have those things you can't receive those things apart from god Amen. you can't you can't expect those things to happen if you're not if you have not turned to god amen if if you're busy doing something else, don't expect God's blessing to be there. Amen. Okay? You might be earning more and being busy with all these things, but believe me, you might be receiving all these things, but when you are not working for God, the blessing is not there. Mm. So don't don't expect that you will have change restoration and reclaim and all these things when you are not are far away from god that's mm. why there will there needs to be a turning turning to god because this is when Amen. change happens we will receive newness we will reclaim you'll have restoration only in god so i pray that we will be turning to him Amen. more and more Brother Marlon and Sister Tin, it's Gara, they're on YouTube. It says, stop running from giving your tithes because that will be your insurance from whatever you need. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's stop running from those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we need to go and go to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, Mom, uh, uh, Pastor uh, Emily Mom. says, ultimate focus for change is God. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Mom, Mom Fem. Fem. We're focusing to God. Amen. Amen. That's what we need to do. Wow, it's very early there. <laughs> yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Praise God for His Word. Amen. I want to end with this verse. Um, Ecclesia, Ezekiel, sorry. Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 26 to 27. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. And I, I will put within you. Amen. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I will put within you. Mm -hmm. And I will remove the heart of stone. From your flesh and give you a heart of flesh and I will put your spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and be careful to obey my rules amen the one thing I want to share to you from this verse is that 
the Lord is the one that is saying He's going to give us a new heart and a new spirit. You don't have to work for it. Are you hearing me? But He's the one that will put that in us. And guess what? Because He will be the one to put it in us, it'll be easy to obey because He's the one to do it. We can walk in in His statutes and walk in obedience because because of what God has put in us. Amen. So the change that, that needs to be done, it will only be done when we allow God to do what needs to be done in us. Amen. So the, it says, uh, the last thing that I said on Sunday was the greatest change in our life doesn't change something, but it changes someone. Yeah. And that someone is well, who? It's us. It's me. It's you. But God loves us so much that he doesn't want us to stay the way we are mm -hmm. he wants us to change he accepts you where you are but he doesn't want you to stay the way you are so today let's ask the lord lord help me to change help me to see the change that i need and be able to ex and, and be able to see all that you have for me just want to read the last one here pastor josie says change us now we must not wait to start mm -hmm. the time is now to take advantage of the wonderful opportunity god is offering us at this moment the time is now to change to change and make god's purpose our purpose don't put it off any longer god is calling us to change your our life right now god cannot fill us unless uh fill us uh, unless we empty ourselves with all the garbage that we accumulate in our life yeah. amen so let's get rid of everything Amen. that will hold us back. Let's run the race that was set before us. Amen. And every one of us, there's, some, there's a race that God has set before us. So let's continue to run that race. Amen. Let's just pray. I want to pray for each and every one of you tonight. And of course, pray for the ones that have a request. For Kabil and also for Sister Makos, uh, workmate, who uh, who needs uh, healing also. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that there's something that you're trying to speak to each and every one of us. I pray, Lord, that we will not procrastinate. I pray, Lord, we will stop trying to run away. Lord, I pray we will embrace the change that you want to do in us. We will accept it. Lord, we will receive it by faith in the name of Jesus. Change us now. Yes, Lord. Yes. This is our desire. Change our heart, O oh God. Lord, make us into you, into your likeness. Lord, we don't want, Lord, any longer to pursue what we want, but we want what you want, Lord. And I pray that everyone that is joining tonight, they will receive what it is that you're trying to say. Lord, I pray we have put off, Lord, so many things in our life that you wanted to do. But this year will not be the year of putting off what you want to do. It will be a year of putting on what you want in our life, Jesus. So we put you on, Jesus. We put on faith. We put on joy. We put on grace. We put on mercy, Lord. Everything that you have for us. Lord Jesus, every fruit of the Spirit that you have for us, we put it on, Jesus. And we give you thanks, Lord, for your word tonight. We thank you for what you have spoken. Thank you, Lord, that we can review, we can meditate, Lord. We can, oh God, Lord, go over what we have heard and, and, and uh, Lord, understand how to apply it in our life. Teach us, God. Come on, ask the Lord. Teach me, Lord, how to apply it in my life. So, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. And we all said amen and amen amen lord we thank you even lord for those so god lord that we have to pray for pray for kabil 
Lord, restore him back to full health in the name of Jesus. Remove this COVID. Even, Lord, for the Garcia family, Lord, Sister Irene, continue, Lord, to be with them in the name of Jesus. Even, Lord, for for Isaac, in Jesus' name, Lord, Lord, everyone, Lord, that's suffering, we pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. Even, Lord, for our sister Macaw's friend, we pray for healing upon every one of these people, Lord. We know that only you can do it, Lord. So we pray for them right now, and we give them up to you in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, grateful to the Lord for this time of worship and prayer. Uh, I believe that uh, God will continue to do what is necessary uh, in our lives as we seek Him more and more and more. As you know, we are now again under another national lockdown. The one good thing is that um, they have allowed us to keep the church open uh, in this season. And I've been praying, I've been asking the Lord, um, you know, uh, if if uh, if we should close because you know uh, I know a lot of people have different concerns about about uh, about what's going on but I believe there's a purpose why God has allowed us to stay open why he has allowed the government to to let us stay open so you know let's be in prayer for all of those that are sick let's continue to pray all the more but I want to say that this Sunday we will be open. We will be open for a service and you can book your tickets online. Uh, but we are going to reduce the number of people that will be able to come. Every Sunday we have allowed for 40 people to come on a Sunday. Now we will make that only half, which is 20. So uh, we will, if you want to come on Sunday, I encourage you to get your tickets online but the reason why we cut it in half is we want to uh, prevent more people from just going out you know taking the trains and buses especially the most vulnerable among us so uh, I would say you know those of you that are older um, try to stay at home watch the live stream uh, unless you want to message me and tell me you really really want to come but I, I, I encourage you, uh, for most of you, especially if you, if you are sick or you know someone that may be, uh, that you are with them and they have become sick, stay at home. We are going to keep the church open. You know why? Because, oh, is this true? Today they said all the worship places must be closed. I don't know. I have to we can go. double check. But otherwise, if they, if the place of worship are, can stay open, I don't know uh, Maybe if they Maybe keep are. watch for any announcements. Yeah, but keep the, um, keep, um, you know, uh, keep an eye out whether uh, we are open or not. I'll make another announcement on Friday. But someone just said here that they said that the place of worship must close. If that is the case, then yes, of course, we will be closed on Sunday. Uh, on the on-site uh church but of course we will be there uh, online we will be here online but otherwise i don't know yet if it is the case as far as i know it is open so uh still book your tickets if you want to be there on sunday of course if it changes i'll make another announcement on friday but uh, let's let's keep an eye out um let's keep in prayer during this time and in this season like i said we're going to be the reporters of good news amen <laughs> yeah. we're going to be spread the good news you know the the report that we're Bringing, going to bring bringers we're going to be the reporters of hope yeah. the reporters of joy amen in this season we will not we will not allow ourselves to be to contribute to the fear but we'll allow ourselves to give more um of, of of good news so that people can be lifted up and and get closer to the lord so I encourage you uh, to join in on Sunday, whether you're joining on-site or online, whatever the case is, let us worship together uh, and praise our God together. God bless you. Have a great week. I'll see you on Friday for the Friday night prayer meeting. 
but let's continue to see what God will do in our midst, especially during this time. Let's be in prayer for all of the uh, for all of the things that are going on. Amen. God bless you.